So far we've been looking at components in Angular. We know that a component is something that you create to render some functionality in a portion of real estate in the user's view. So if you have like this piece of real estate where you want some dynamic functionality, you create a component. You write the view and you write the backing logic that goes with it. And you create these reusable elements. But here's the thing, not all reusable elements are actually views. You could create some reusable element, which is just functionality, which is just like a service or a method that needs to be used in multiple places. Not all of the reusable functionality come with the view attached. So if you need to create those kind of business services, which don't really have a view, you can create what's called services in Angular. Services are also classes like components are, and uh, it contains methods which contain functionality that you can reuse across multiple different components. Think about some common business service methods which you would need you know, multiple components in your project to access. You can create them as services and provide that service to each and every component in your project that needs those functionalities. So um, here I'm gonna talk about how to create a service, how to use it, and uh, how this whole thing works. So to create a service, I can use the generate uh, functionality of the Angular CLI and uh, give it a service name, and then it's gonna create a service for me. So I'm gonna create ng generate. For creating a component, I would say ng generate component. To create a service, I say ng generate service. And then let me create this test service. I'm just gonna call it test. And uh, what this is gonna do is create a service in the app location, All right? So you see here, it has created the test.service.ts and test.service.spec.ts, which is the test case. As you can see, there is no HTML and there's no CSS because the service is essentially just logic, just JavaScript code that can be used by other components which would potentially have a view. Now, if you look at the service file that's created here, you see this is actually very simple. It's just a class called test service, has an empty constructor which you can easily get rid of. It's an empty class. There's really nothing else to it except for this annotation. This annotation is called injectable. This annotation is what tells Angular that this is a service. Just like an add component annotation tells Angular that a particular class is a component, and an add ng module annotation tells that a particular class is a Angular module. Similarly, an add injectable means that this is a service. But there's actually more to it. You remember when a component was created, not only were the files created for the component, the HTML, the CSS, the TypeScript, and the test, the Angular CLI also added an entry to the module in order to assign the component to one of the Angular modules. A component has to be a part of the module, right? So Angular CLI would detect where you're running the command, where you've created the component, and then assign it to that module. So if you just did an ng generate component, it would go to the app module. If you generated a component in the view folder, it would go to the view module. Now here, you see there is no such thing. Angular CLI has not updated the app module even though it's created a test service here. This is because it's not obvious where a developer would want the service to go. However, just like a component, a service does need to be a part of a module. So if you have to make this test.service.ts be a part of the app module, then you need to declare it inside the ng module annotation. You're not gonna be doing this inside the declarations though. The declarations is where you define all your components. In order to declare a service, what you need to do is add this to the providers node over here. You see this, so there is a third element in this ng module object called providers and that's also an empty array. The services that you use in your module, services that you declare in your module need to be listed in the providers section of your ng module. So declarations contain all the components that are a part of the module. Providers contain all the services that are a part of the module. And imports contain all the other modules that this module 
depends on, all right? So in order to add this test service to the app module, what I need to do is add that class, which is the test service class into this array, which is over here. And um, I automatically import it from dot slash test dot service. And now with this, the service is created and it's a part of the app module. Now this service is available for other components to use. And what do I mean by the components? That's a little bit tricky. So hold that thought for a bit. This service is available. Let's just leave it there for now. App module contains some components, right? It contains this app component. This app component can technically use the test service now that that service is a part of this module. Now, how do we use this test service? Let's start by creating a simple utility method on the test service so that we can execute it and test it. So let's say I create a simple method which is called print to console, which takes in some argument and then it just prints that to the console. Very simple method. All it does is take an argument and print that to the console. Now, in order to test that other components can access the service, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a component call this method from the component class and then execute this logic. This is a typical use case. A service is gonna have methods and you would want the component class whatever functionality you have over here to be able to call those methods and execute it. Now, how do I call the print to console method of the test service in my app component? How do I access it? The way to access it is by using something called dependency injection. Learn what dependency injection is and how to use it in the next video.